All right, guys, welcome back to Out Work Outdoors. Today, we're going to be doing the review on our boat, the G3 1910 six month review. Lots of things to be discussed, lots of different things to be discussed. All right, guys, we are not sponsored by anybody. So that's the full disclosure, okay? We're not sponsored by anybody. So this review is gonna be 100% us, okay? And if you're a follower of the channel, you guys know we bought this boat back in March and on its maiden voyage, five minutes into it, we had engine problems, okay? That Yamaha had engine problems. And the reason why we bought this boat, one of the main reasons was I actually wanted Yamaha. Because I, I had a Mercury before, and we still got the Mercury on the little John boat. It gave us a bunch of problems over the years. So we said, to heck with it, let's try Yamaha. And Yamaha disappointed, okay? So let's just put that there. Was it a major problem? Uh, it wasn't a major problem, but it has escalated to a major problem. So I got, actually got a list of all the things that uh, the boat's got issues with. So here's my list. Loose zip ties on fuel lines and cooling lines. That's that's funny. It's not running good above 20. So the engine in the last I would say two months developed this weird thing. It won't plane. Not like it's got no power, yeah. like more like it can't even hold its power. So I'll show you some footage of that later. But basically you give it full throttle, you get up on plane. And it just chokes and then chokes and it chokes out hard and you have to pull the throttle back or it will actually die on you okay so major major issue there okay when we bought the boat the boat had a cracked console uh the dealership is working with us with that but we just haven't even brought it in for that yet uh but they know about it the boat has leaks somewhere i don't know why it's a brand new boat brand new boat it's got a leak somewhere we don't we still don't know where the leak is coming from but for some reason, as the boat's aging, the leak has stopped. So, uh, I don't know what's up with that. But that's an official complaint. We have a ripped passenger seat. Ripped passenger seat. Okay, that started happening like a month and a half in to ownership. Uh, we've already complained about that. They are supposed to replace it for us. But like I said, we haven't brought it in yet because we fish a lot. So, it's still fishing season and we're, we want to use the boat. So, we're still, we're still going to do that. We got live well pump feeds. The only live well pump. It feels a little weak. I don't know what it is, but it just feels weak. It's 800 gallon per minute pump, but it feels like a 500. That just that just might be me. I've never had a big boat like this before, so that just might be me. And there's paint chip issues. Paint chip issues. See that? I mean, that's not supposed to happen. Paint chip issues on the front and on the back. On the front, it's actually a little bit worse. So, it's kind of a no bueno there. Uh, we got a wheel bearing, possibly bad wheel bearing on the right hand side. And that is something that, if you're part of the Facebook group, uh, I think everybody knows about that. It's running a bare trailer, which is the, uh, the minimum trailer. Um, uh, I guess no one has anything good to say about it based on the reviews but for me I think it's all right this is a basic trailer uh, for the for the average guy I think it'll be fine if for the uh, for the hardcore guy like we are you know it's gonna need some upgrades it didn't come with any brakes or anything like that so we're gonna need some brakes probably have to find a retrofit kit or, or a brake installation kit of some kind and uh, install that and that's that on top of that on top of that the boat I mean that's a lot of that's a lot of problems let's, let's not even say it's not a problem but on top of that the boat's been doing pretty good um we've taken it out on a tournament we've uh you guys see some videos the boat's been awesome fishability is awesome uh plenty of storage for whatever you want to do it's been pretty good no complaints there um live well is huge okay so that's something we didn't show but the live well is huge and for us, multi-species guys, that's what we wanted. We had big live wells. Big live wells are actually what we wanted. And live wells did not disappoint. Live well size did not disappoint. And on top of that, we uh in terms of updates, 
graft is not there obviously, but we got one graft, two graft, and then a third graft in front. We got the uh, Ben Cole Ultra X115. Reviews coming out on that pretty soon too. We're running lithium batteries out back. So we are running lithiums. Uh, if you have any questions on lithium, let us know. We'll do. Uh, we'll try to address that. Because yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are wanting to know. Why are you running lithium? Why? So we're going to try to address that. And uh, for the most part, like that, the boat, the boat's for 37000 is what we paid for. I think it's worth 37000 uh, for the size of the boat. It's kind of rare, too, to have this model. I haven't really seen a review out there, too. That's why we're doing this. Okay, so for anybody that wants to know if this is a tournament grade boat. Mm, compared to a fiberglass boat, I would probably say pretty close. Is it? I mean, it fishes like a big boat. It definitely fishes like a big boat. Is it a stable? It's no fiberglass. I mean, you could do this and the boat wobbling. Okay. The boat is wobbling. But I feel like if you can't catch fish out of this, you're not going to catch much fish out of the boat either. So it's pretty good for the most part. It takes weights pretty good. It still gives you an ass beating, but you know, it's an aluminum boat. Uh, what can they do to get that better? Let's probably inject more foam into it. Probably help out a bunch. And uh, let me show you what we got. So this is like I said, six month review plus just update on what we do. Uh, we got uh, two two blue ones are Battleborns, and this is actually a uh, Amp Outdoors. It's a dedicated 36 volt uh, control board battery. And then we still got the old school uh, LED for just cranking power. We got cranking, and that's it. And then we got lithiums in parallel for bilge pumps, everything electronics, and then we have a dedicated trolling motor battery. So that's what we got going. Uh, so far, that battery configuration is pretty awesome. Can't complain. Lithium power for the uh, Minn Kota Ultrax over there is it's pretty much second to none. I don't know if you can beat that. And yep, pretty good. It's big money though, don't get me wrong, but pretty good. So, G3, you know, G3. Alright, let's talk layout of the boat. So, when we first got it, we all thought the more space, the better. But the more you use it, the more... I'm just nitpicking, okay? Because overall, I like it. It feels like, like you were, like my brother was saying, uh, they didn't... I feel like, I feel like you got gypped a little bit with these two little compartments. And then there's a big compartment up front. You know, big compartment, as you can see. I don't know why they just didn't do two big compartments. And also, also, they didn't, they didn't give you locking lids everywhere. They, so all the ones that have these holes here, that's us. We actually put that lid locking uh, latch on there. So that's a little weird. Well, I don't know why they didn't give you that. Uh, on top of that, after using it for a while, I think the steering wheel is a little weird. Did you get bit? No, I'm not a rock. Yeah. But the steering wheel, in my opinion, it needs a better design of some kind. Um, pretty much, yeah. So that's the review of six months' progress. The rod box is pretty good. No complaints about the rod box except for there just isn't enough rod storage. I think they give you six or seven. We need like 15. I think that's probably the biggest shortcoming. And what else we got? You got anything else to say about the boat review? Anything? Oh, we covered it pretty good. The paint. Chip's pretty good, easy. The paint chip's pretty easy. I don't know I mean, why. The oh, yeah, I, gotta, I gotta show you the front. This, the front is where you can really see the paint chip. Right here. See that? I mean, it's still like fingernails chipping, so I don't know what the deal is with that. But supposedly a paint, like a paint warranty, I'm sure. Let's see what a G3 has to say about that. So, yeah, see paint chip right there, paint chip right here, paint chip right here. Paint chip right here, paint chip right there, bunch of paint chip on this side. That's a deep scratch. I don't know what that is. Paint chip, paint chip, paint chip. There's a bunch of paint chips on the back of the boat too. So we're kind of like 
Oh, here's, a, here's a crazy paint chip right here. This is not us, okay? That's not us. That is... That's just poor prep or something. So anyways, that's the paint side. Um, the boat's pretty quick. We never, I've never truly topped it, out, but fastest we've ever gotten it, 52 miles per hour. According to uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. 47, I've run up to 49 and I was like, that's pretty much fast enough for me. So I feel like at that speed, the boats, do you feel like the boat's not very stable at 50 miles an hour? No. It's not? Not really. Like it's a little too light, huh? Yeah, or uh, the hull is not so good, so it's not pushing it back down. Or yeah, or, so. Or a motor is mounted too high. Or a motor is mounted too high. Yeah, that's the other thing too, is because the dealership gave us the motor with the, uh, was the only one on the bottom setting, right? Uh, like one of those. Let me check. Let me check. So we are on, yeah, the bottom setting or top setting, whichever one you want to say. So that setting does not cater to top speed. That setting is catered to whole shot. Oh yeah, whole shot. Whole shot is excellent on this boat. Would you say whole shot is excellent? Very good. Whole shot is very good. Like, pretty impressive. Okay, whole shot is pretty. Whole shot spot on. So for the guys who like the whole shot stuff. It's good, okay. Zero to thirty is really quick. Thirty to fifty is pretty slow, okay. So that's what we get. We gotta say. I mean, you could reprop it, and you could probably get it to go fifty-four, fifty-five, fifty-six. But a jack plate might be a little faster than that too. But that's not the point of this boat, okay. So the point of our reason for buying this boat is it's an all-around boat. So we need the whole shots. We need all these other things. We do a lot of river fishing. Today we're actually on the lake, but. Yep, that's pretty much uh, anything that comes to mind. Um, let's see. Oh, in terms of wiring the boat, okay? Wiring was kind of a nightmare. We did the wiring ourselves. And they have the conduit. Conduit runs on that side of the boat, right? But the conduit that's in there is kind of small. I think it's only maybe a two inch or three inch conduit. And, um, there was been one night we almost uh, we almost threw tantrums at this boat because that little conduit was too small. We were trying to wire uh, communication stuff back and forth. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, we have an Ethernet hub in there, so all of our electronics are networked together. If we were trying to run a comm line Ethernet wire from uh, the trolling motor to the fish finder's hub, so we can control it all up because that trolling motor is pretty beast. You know, it's got the iPilot link on it. So you control it using the buttons on your uh, fish farms. We are trying that one night and we uh, we about gave up on it and then we got pretty mad and uh, we got kind of lucky and then we fixed it and we called again. It's one of them long nights. So that is, uh, you know, I think for the for the 17 inch models, if, if, if G3 is like so these guys that buy these aluminum boats, they're not gonna rig up that much. I would say that's probably true for a 17, you know, foot boat but once you step up to the 19 the 20s man you gotta give us the proper conduits or routing whatever you call them i don't know the the vocabulary but you gotta give us all that because the guys that buy these boats they're probably gonna do the exact same thing we're doing this is the boat that's gotta do a little bit of everything basketball tournaments and crappy tournaments and it's a great boat oh yeah it's a great boat for the high school anglers the 150 on there, it's pretty quick. Like I said, top speed is a little slow, but whole shot is good. And if you can't win out of this boat, I don't think you need to even go thinking about a full 21 foot, 250 or 300 horsepower on the back of it because I've been fishing bass tournaments for what, five years now? I mean, you don't even know, I fish the kayak world, but at the same time, I'm running an old kayak. At one time, I had the latest and dressed best kayak, but now, feels like uh, my kayak's old school. It feels like our kayaks are the oldest ones on, on our little tour. And we still kick ass, okay? So fishing's not always about your equipment. It's about putting the pieces of the puzzle together. So if you feel like you can't be, if you feel like you can't compete because your boat is not fast enough, man, I tell you what, you, you're, you're not, 
you ain't gonna make it in this world. I'll tell you that. So a lot of guys, they uh, they have slow boats and they kick ass. At least on the on the uh, you know, statewide stuff. And especially if you're in a tournament, if you're in a boat tournament, you're fishing the smaller bodies of water, the sub twenty thousand acre lakes. You really don't need a really 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 fast boat if you got a good plan going. You know, if you if you got no plans and you're just running and gunning, then yeah, you probably need a fast boat. And in terms of electronics, I think uh, the boat accepts electronics fairly well. The console probably needs to be a little bit bigger because it came with a little five-inch. Uh, was it a hook five? Yeah. Hook five, right? Just yeah. a hook five or hook seven. Yeah, it was pretty. It's pretty small. So as soon as we got that, we chucked it. We put our Helix. Um, we put our Hummingbird 1198 on there, which is you know five or six years old, but it still kicks ass. We use it for maps, but it's not on there today because we're on a relaxing day. It's not really a hardcore fishing day. And then we got the Helix 10, and then we have Helix 7 up front. So, of course, that's going to change. Do you know Mega's been Mega's been shipping one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get one pretty soon, too. So Maybe during Black Friday. Looking for that Black Friday deal. You know what I'm talking about? Hopefully, Tag Warehouse has a, a, a deal, and it's not, like, excluding Hummingbird. Or something like that. But anyways. Uh, I think that's good enough. Oh yeah. We got the. How is the vinyl holding up right? So we actually favored the vinyl over the carpet. The, I must I must say the vinyl is holding up pretty good. Pretty impressed with that. But it I gets hot. But it gets hot though. But. I don't have to worry about it like I, I do with a uh, carpet. It feels like every time we both flip a fish. We don't think about it twice you know. So that's good. How many times have you washed this boat? Uh, two or three times. Two or three times? The outside a lot, not the inside. Yeah, we hardly wash the inside. As you can see, there's a, a stain right there. Rod holders hold eight and a half foot rods. Eight and a half foot rods is a big bonus. You might as well stretch it to nine to be honest. Yeah, that's pretty good. Not enough rods though. Not enough rod holders. Of course, I'm a trimmer. Like I said, I'd like 15, right? 15 is a good number? Yeah, I mean, you could get that out and put a lot of rods in there, but they won't yeah. be stacked, you know? Yeah, we were just talking about, like, we were just talking about that. You know, probably taking these two out and then just do the whole, like, run of <laughs> basically extending that out here or something like that and just do a whole, like, big roll of something. So that's what we want to do. I don't know if that's something we'll do. So far, the, so far this boat, we haven't, we haven't done a lot with this boat. I know you guys are probably going to hate us for saying that, but even after we bought this boat, we still were pretty hardcore on the kayak trails. But coming next year, that might change. Might be all stripers and boat tournaments. No, 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 you don't know yet. Haven't made a decision yet, but we, were, we weren't supposed to be that hardcore on the kayaks this year because we, were, we didn't even plan on doing very well. But somehow, you know, when you're just having fun, you actually do better than when you're planning uh, and being very strategic. You kind of have fun uh, fishing. But for the most part, that's the review. Yamaha 150 1910 G3. Pretty impressed with it. It has some flaws. It's got some stuff that warranty needs to take care of. But I hope that's it. Hopefully it comes back from warranty and everything's just flawless. Alright guys. See you on the next one. See you guys. That should be enough fun for me, but